Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture of 19 SC PHYU301. We have been discussing the first chapter complex numbers and this is the story so, so far. We discussed quadratic equations which are of this form ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Roots of this quadratic equation are given by this equation x is equal to minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Quadratic equations even with real coefficients can lead to complex roots and that is why we discuss the quadratic equations and their roots. Then we considered a few definitions in relation with a complex number say z which is which we have been writing as x plus i y. Then real part of this complex number z is, is x and imaginary part of this complex number z is equal to y. Remember that both real and imaginary parts of the complex number are real. The imaginary part is called as imaginary because it is multiplied by this i which is equal to square root of minus 1 an imaginary number. Then we define complex conjugate for a complex number z which is x plus i y its complex conjugate is denoted by z star which is obtained by reversing the sign of imaginary part so z, for z its complex conjugate is going to be this x minus i y then we also defined modulus or absolute value of the complex number which is obtained by taking square root of x square plus y square since x and y both are real numbers irrespective of whether they are positive or negative mod z will always be a real positive number and we also saw the geometrical interpretation of that when we considered plotting complex number in our gun diagram modulus is nothing but the distance between the point which represents the complex number and the origin we also define the argument let me call that as theta now which is tan inverse of y by x this modulus is rotational angle made by the line joining the point which represents the complex number and origin with positive real axis. Now let's move on to the topics of this video lecture. We will discuss the rectangular coordinate system and polar coordinate system in a plane because the two representations of complex number that we want to discuss today rectangular representation and polar representation they both stem from rectangular and polar coordinate systems and then we'll see a few examples where we will convert complex number from one form to other form. What is a coordinate system? A coordinate system is a way to locate a point in the given figure given the address or so called coordinates of that point. We will confine our discussion to planes because complex numbers lie in this plane, Argand plane. In a rectangular coordinate system, a point is located by giving x and y the two coordinates. When you represent the first coordinate x, you basically, so this horizontal line is x-axis and the vertical axis is y-axis. When you give x, you represent, you express a line which is parallel to y-axis. Now in, on this vertical line, all the points have x component as x. Then when you give the second coordinate y, you express another line which is now parallel to x axis and for on this line all the points have y component as y and wherever these two lines meet becomes the point which is to be located which is located by using these two coordinates. So this is the rectangular system. Why it is called as rectangular system is clear from the figure. You can see that a rectangle is formed. The base of that rectangle now has length x and height of that rectangle is y. You can convince yourself that no matter where the point x and y lies, a similar rectangle is formed and therefore the coordinate system is called as the rectangular coordinate system. Now rectangular representation of complex number stems from this rectangular coordinate system. Whenever I write this number z as x plus i y, then I am writing the complex number in rectangular form. Why? Because this is now a plane but now it is not x and y axis but this axis is real axis and this axis is imaginary axis so it becomes argand plane now. Now when I give the 
real part of complex number which is x then i express this line which is parallel to imaginary axis on this line all the points now have the same real part which is x when you give the imaginary part then you express this line which is parallel to real axis and on this line now all the points have same imaginary part as y when these two lines intersect is the point z which is x plus i y now you can clearly see that it is very similar to the rectangular coordinate system and that's why this representation is called as rectangular representation of complex number we have been writing complex number in the same form rectangular form so far in a couple of lectures we will see the two other forms in which complex number can be written polar and exponential form now let's move on to the next representation next form of complex number which is oh before that keep in mind that rectangular representation is unique in the sense that every complex number z uniquely gives you a single point a single point in argand plane which is not true in case of the other two coordinate system in those cases different complex numbers can lead to the same point in argand plane if it is not clear don't worry about that we will discuss in depth about this in future so right now just hang on to this thought that rectangular representation is unique one complex number lead to a single point in argand plane whereas in other two cases multiple complex number can lead to the same point now let's discuss the polar coordinate system suppose this is the point x and y which is to be plotted which is to be located this axis is x axis this axis is y axis now instead of giving x and y coordinates in case of polar coordinate system r and theta is given how it is done we'll see that now so when r is given this is the point which has coordinate x and y this is x axis this is y axis when you give r it gives us a circle which has radius equal to r and which is which is centered at the origin so once you express this r in polar coordinate system you get a circle which is also a line just like in rectangular coordinate system we get these lines x and y in polar coordinate system when you express r you give this line which is now a closed line it is not a straight line now but a closed line which forms the circle then then you represent this theta this theta tells us another line an arrow now which is which originates at origin and which makes a rotational angle of theta with positive real axis so this angle is theta now so wherever these two lines wherever these two lines meet this circle and this arrow becomes the point which is to be located with these two numbers now it should be clear now since we are giving point in two dimensional figure in a plane we will need two numbers to locate any point so coordinates are going to be two for rectangular coordinate system the coordinates are x and y for polar coordinate system the coordinates are now r and theta there is one more difference what is the difference when you consider rectangular coordinate system with x and y as the coordinates then both x and y they have the same dimensions both of them are lengths in case of polar coordinates now this r has dimensions of length but theta is not of the same dimension it is dimensionless quantity it is an angle rotational angle to be specific that is one more difference between polar and rectangular coordinate system so now let's come to polar representation of complex number suppose this is the complex number z which we want to plot which is equal to x plus i y when i write it like this it is the rectangular form of complex number this now is real axis and this is imaginary axis keep that in mind this is argan diagram complex plane what is this distance this distance is now x it is the real part of the complex number what is this now it is y it is the imaginary part of the complex number now when you want to write the complex number in polar form 
it is based on the polar coordinate system so what you do is instead of giving x and y instead of, of giving these real and imaginary part you give r which is radius of the circle which is center about the origin so this circle here just like we did in case of polar coordinate system then you give theta which is arrow making an angle theta with positive real axis this is the rotational angle so since it is rotational angle now it, it can be positive or negative depending on in which direction you rotate this is r which is radius of the circle and this is theta how can we find r given x and y we have already seen that this r is nothing but mod z modulus or absolute value of the complex number which is equal to square root of x square plus y square so given real and imaginary components imaginary parts you can now find out the radius similarly you can find out theta theta is nothing but argument of complex number tan inverse of y by x we have already seen that so given a complex number z which is equal to x plus i y when you want to write it in polar representation what you first do is you find out r which is radius of the circle this radius which is same as mod z which is equal to square root of x square plus y square so you find out the modulus then you find out this angle theta or argument of the complex number which is tan inverse of y by x once you have r and theta now let's try to write down x and y in terms of r and theta you can see that a right angle triangle is formed here this angle is 90 degrees in this angle if i find out cos theta now cos theta is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse so cos is going to be cos theta is going to be ratio of this x which is adjacent side and r which is hypotenuse therefore cos theta is x by y sorry x by r and x is equal to r cos theta if I find out sin theta in this triangle, it is equal to now opposite side y divided by hypotenuse which is r and therefore y can be written in terms of r and theta as r sin theta. So we have these two relations for x and y in terms of r and theta. Suppose you are given a number in rectangular coordinate system which is z is equal to x plus i y. Since you know real and imaginary part, you can find out these two terms r modulus of the complex number or absolute value of the complex number and you can find out theta which is argument of the complex number. Then we know the relation between x and y. So to write this complex number z in polar representation, all I do is I plug in this x and y in terms of r and theta. So z when I write it is as r cos theta since this is nothing but x plus i into r sin theta because this is now y and z therefore I'll rearrange this r cos theta plus i sin theta so this is the polar representation of complex number why is it called as polar, polar representation it is because when you consider rectangular coordinate system your coordinates are x and y but when you say you are writing the number in polar coordinate system you express it in terms of r and theta it is exactly what we are doing when we represent the complex number in rectangular form we are representing it in terms of x and y whereas when we represent it in polar representation we represent it in terms of r and theta let's see how this works in more detail suppose this is the point this point is shown here this is in first quadrant now therefore z is of this form mod x 
plus i into mod y both real and imaginary parts of the complex number are positive if i want to write this in terms of polar coordinate system z i have to write it like this r cos theta plus i sin theta where r is mod z and theta is argument of z i can calculate modulus and argument let me erase this now since the point is in first quadrant theta is in the range of 0 to pi by 2 and therefore cos theta will be positive and sin theta will also be positive and because of that when you find out z this r cos theta is positive plus i r sin theta sorry so this is also positive this is y this is x remember r is always positive and therefore cos theta is going to decide the sign of x and sin theta is going to decide the sign of y in this case both of them are positive let's consider another point this is the point which is now in second quadrant so z if i write it in rectangular representation it is going to be of this form minus mod x plus i into mod y its real part is negative and imaginary part is positive in polar representation it is written like this cos theta plus i sin theta now since the point is in second quadrant angle theta lies in this range pi by 2 to pi and therefore cos theta is negative so this term will turn out to be negative this is multiplied by r and sin theta is positive and therefore this term this term therefore is positive let's consider a point in third quadrant in third quadrant z is minus mod x minus i into mod y so both real and imaginary parts are now negative in polar coordinate system it is written like this r cos theta plus i sin theta i have been taking this r common from the terms now and then now theta is in the range pi to 3 pi by 2 and therefore cos theta is negative and sin theta is also negative therefore this term will be negative which is the real part as we expect Similarly, this term will also be negative, which is the imaginary part. Now, the fourth quadrant. In fourth quadrant, z is equal to the real part is positive and imaginary part is negative. For complex number written in polar coordinates, r cos theta plus i sin theta. Now, theta is in this range 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi cos theta is positive and sin theta is negative which is clear here because of that the real part will be positive and the imaginary part will turn out to be negative this is the polar representation of complex number let's consider a few examples suppose z is equal to 1 plus 2i what is the form in which this complex number is written? It is clearly rectangular form. And I want to write this complex number in polar form now. What I do? First thing I do is I find out mod z, which is equal, which is going to be r. This is square root of 1 square plus 2 square or this is equal to square root of 5. I'll keep that square root of 5 as it is. Viewers can change that to decimal representation. Then we find out theta. To find out theta, let's first plot the complex number roughly in the argon plane. This is imaginary part. Sorry, this is this is real part and this is imaginary part. The complex number is going to be somewhere here where this length is 1 and this length is 2 so this and this angle is theta theta is going to be tan inverse of 
2 by 1 which is 1.11 1 radian writing the complex number in polar form is simple z is this is the polar form r cos theta plus i sin theta all i do is i plug in the values of r and theta here so z is equal to therefore square root of 5 into cos of 1.1 1 .1 1 plus i into sine of 1.11 this is how you can write this in polar form make sure that when you are converting a complex number from rectangular to polar form you find out r you find out theta and then simply plug in values of r and theta in this equation you don't find out these trigonometric values and multiply it by square root of 5. What will happen in that case? You will again get the rectangular representation. So you keep it as it is. Let's now consider another number. Let's consider a number which is minus 4 plus 3i. What is the coordinate? What is the quadrant of this complex number? It now lies in the second quadrant so i am roughly plotting it the point is going to be somewhere here where this length is 4 and this length or this length is equal to 3 now modulus of the complex number mod z is equal to square root of 16 plus 9 so this is equal to 5 and let me write this angle as phi and tan phi now is 3 by 4 or phi is equal to 0 0.64 radian is this the argument of complex number no the argument of complex number is this theta and therefore theta is which is argument of complex number which is equal to pi minus 0 0.64 this is in radians so this is equal to 2.49 radian we want to write the complex number in polar form we have obtained mod z which is r and we also have obtained the argument theta we consider this equation r cos theta plus i sin theta and instead of r and theta now we plug in instead of r we plug in 5 which is modulus of complex number and instead of theta we plug in this number 2.49 plus i sine 2.49 so this is how you write this complex number minus 4 plus 3i in polar form z let's say is minus 6 minus 3i what is the quadrant now it is in third quadrant i'll first let's plot the complex number in argon plane this is real axis this is imaginary axis the complex number lies in third quadrant so this is this distance is 3 and this is the complex number r which is mod z is this first let's find out mod z which is equal to square root of minus 6 square plus minus 3 squared which is equal to 6.71 now let's find out theta argument before that let's find out this angle phi tan phi is 3 by 6 or 1 by 2 therefore phi is equal to 0 0.46 theta which is argument of the complex number is this angle i am considering the clockwise rotation so it is now negative so the angle theta is minus pi 
plus 0.46 which is 2.68 radian I am writing this as negative angle you could have chosen the other way around you could consider this angle which is positive both of them are correct so once I get this r and theta remember this is nothing but r z now when written in polar form is of this form r cos theta plus i sin theta i plug in the values of r and theta to get the number in polar form 6.71 into cos of minus 2.68 plus i sin of minus 2.68 so this is the number converted to polar form one more example for conversion from rectangular to polar form z is say 5 minus 2i what is the quadrant it lies in fourth quadrant let's plot it this is real axis this is imaginary axis and number this length is 5 and this is 2 and the complex number is going to be here this is mod z which is equal to r this angle is theta argument of the complex number let's first find out mod z which is equal to r which is square root of 25 plus 4 so r is equal to 5.38 theta is minus of tan inverse of y by x which is 2 by 5 I am already considering this negative sign here because the rotation is now clockwise so theta will turn out to be equal to minus 0 0.38 radian to write down the complex number in polar form this is the equation sorry this is z r cos theta plus i sin theta so z is 5.38 into cos of minus 0 0.38 plus I sine of minus 0 0.38 so here we have converted the complex number which was in rectangular form to a form which is now polar form these are the few examples which we considered for the conversion from rectangular to polar system now let's consider an example for conversion from polar to rectangular form so z suppose is given in this form 5 into cos of 1.29 plus sine of i sine of 1.29 whenever the complex number is given in polar form there are a few checks that you should make to make sure that the form is correct first one is this number it should be positive because it is this is r it should be positive and real second check is these angles they should be same they cannot be different because theta or argument of the complex number is going to be same for the given complex number when there are no unit specified for the angle you should always consider them to be in radians now you want to write this complex number in rectangular form what you do is x is 5 into cos of 1.29 and y is 5 into sine of 1.29 so this gives you x this gives y once you calculate them the number is converted to rectangular form so it is 5 x turns out to be equal to 1.38 plus i into y is 4.8 so 
so this is the rectangular representation of this complex number which is given in polar form we should try more examples for conversion from polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar you can find many problems in the given references or if you are officially enrolled you can check the online portal you should find more problems there that is all for today's lecture let's summarize what we have done we first considered the rectangular representation of complex number whenever complex number is written in this form z is equal to x plus i y it is called as rectangular representation why because it is closely related with rectangular coordinate system then we considered the polar representation polar representation of complex number is like this r into cos theta plus i sin theta where r is mod z and theta is argument of z you know how to find out the argument and modulus of complex numbers then we saw the conversion from rectangular to polar coordinate system so z when is given in this form it is the rectangular form and you want to write the complex number in polar form what you do you first find out z which is equal to square root of x square plus y square now r is nothing but mod z then you find out this theta which is tan inverse of y by x and then once you have these two values r and theta you write this as r into cos theta plus i sin theta you do not multiply r and cos theta and r and sin theta otherwise you will again write the number in rectangular form you keep values of r and theta as it is in this equation to convert complex number from rectangular form to polar form and then we considered the conversion from polar to rectangular form if a number complex number is written in polar form then it is of this form r is mod this is r or modulus of the complex number to convert it to rectangular form is now simple you multiply r by cos theta and then you multiply r by sin theta this is now nothing but x and this is y so z you get it in polar form it is essential that you should be able to make these conversions in next lecture we will consider the third representation of complex number which is exponential representation of complex number practice more to understand all the concepts that we have been discussing so far they are important and you won't get anything unless you understand all these concept thank you for watching this video